I just returned home from Stanton, Tennessee, where I visited the future home of Ford's Blue Oval City, an enormous manufacturing plant where Ford's gonna make its next generation all electric pickup truck, currently codenamed the T3. Now at this site, Ford and its partner, SK Innovation, is also going to be building a battery manufacturing plant. And the plant is gonna be capable of producing 43 gigawatt hour of battery per year as Ford takes control of its battery supply instead of relying on third-party suppliers. Now, I also had the opportunity to sit down with Ford CEO, Jim Farley, to discuss Blue Oval City as well as Ford's future electrification plans. So don't go anywhere. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. This video is powered by QMerit, North America's leading provider of installation services for electric vehicle charging, home energy storage, and other electrification technologies. See how Qmera is making the energy transition easy for home and business owners by following the link in the description of this video. Ford invited a small group of journalists to take a tour of the construction site, and the plan was for us to start out with a bus ride around Blue Oval City. Now, Blue Oval City is huge. It's 3,600 acres, which is almost six square miles. So the bus took us to check out the progress on the various buildings and infrastructure. The $5.6 billion Blue Oval City mega complex will be Ford's largest, most costly facility to date. And it's integral to Ford's future success as the brand transitions to electric vehicles. Unfortunately, less than 10 minutes into the tour, the heavens opened up and it began to pour. Quickly, the site became a huge mud pit and getting out of the bus to take a closer look at the buildings and record video just wasn't possible. Ford had even rented a Ferris wheel that we were gonna ride after the bus ride so we could take pictures from above and get a bird's eye view of the whole complex. But the weather prevented me from taking advantage of that opportunity. However, we were able to drive all around the complex and see the hundreds of earth movers, many gigantic cranes and even concrete pumps in action and it was actually surprising that most of the workers continued to work through the pouring rain. We drove by many miles and piles of pipe waiting to be installed, as well as the location for a new dedicated utility power plant. Now that's needed because the power demands from this site are gonna be similar to that of a small city. The site will also have its own water tower. Ford is targeting a production run rate of 2 million electric vehicles annually across the globe by late 2026, and Blue Oval City, at its full capacity, will have the ability to pump out 500,000 electric trucks per year. The first vehicle to be produced at Blue Oval City will be Ford's next generation electric pickup truck, codenamed the T3, which is short for Trust the Truck. Now, Trust the Truck is a name that stuck after its development team made it their rallying cry. Evidently, the team's mission was to create an electric truck that people can trust in the digital age, one that's fully updatable, constantly improving, and supports towing, hauling, exportable power, and whatever new innovations owners will want. Now, Ford hasn't revealed much details, but I believe we did get a quick glimpse of it just for a second in Ford's Blue Oval City Live video. Ford also provided us with some fun facts to put into perspective how huge this project is. Construction has been underway for about a year now and won't be completed until sometime in 2025, but to date, Ford has trucked in 1 million tons of stone, and that's equal to the weight of 6,500 Boeing 747 aircraft. They've also moved more than 10 million cubic yards of soil, enough to fill the Empire State Building over six times. They've poured enough concrete to fill the 400,000 gallon Tennessee Aquarium 90 times, and they've erected 39,000 tons of structural steel, 
equal to the weight of 175 Statues of Liberty. Okay, next up, I speak with Ford CEO Jim Farley about Blue Oval City and Ford's electrification program. So I'm here in Stanton, Tennessee with Jim <laughs> Farley, CEO of Ford Motor Company, and I'm sitting in an F-150 Lightning. I'm very comfortable in this truck, as <laughs> my followers know I have one and absolutely love it. Um, and this is the pro version, which I also really like. I tell you, yes. after driving a pro version, I drove yes. one after I bought my Lariat, I almost said, should I have gotten the pro and saved the money? Because for, it's it's an incredible value for what you get. But I it like is. my Lariat. And, and so many of the customers get $7,500 now. Yeah, exactly. For the pro version. Well, um, I actually got the tax credit because no, I was did one, you? Of the, one, <laughs> Smart guy. one of the first people that, that, okay. that signed up for it. But in any event, so we're here in, in Stanton, Tennessee, sitting in, in uh, this Lightning. And the reason why we're here is because we are at Ford's Blue Oval City. Well, the future home of Ford's Blue Oval City, it's a gigantic construction site at, yes. at this time. And gigantic is an understatement. It, it's six square <laughs> six miles. Six miles, yeah. It's, it's, it's enormous. It's actually, yeah, our biggest... It's our biggest industrial site, and you know the biggest till this. One of the biggest was the Rouge, where my grandfather worked. We built in 28, 1928. So, it. I kind of think of this. I know Bill does too. Is kind of the new Rouge. It's about a hundred years since we built the Rouge. Mm -hmm. And you know, while it must be great to be the CEO of Ford Motor Company, one of those the the the, the car company with the most storied history in America, but it's also a difficult time, in my opinion. Yes. The entire industry is going through the greatest transformation since Ford brought it the automobile and took people off Absolutely horses. Absolutely right. And and Absolutely you know right. so so you know there's there's going to be a lot of skinned knees there's yes. going to be a lot of yes. you know missteps yes. and and you're tasked with guiding the company through yes. this period and part of what you're planning on how you're going to succeed is where we are right now. Correct. Tell us a little bit about uh, Blue Oval City and also why you chose Stanton Tennessee. For a couple of reasons, you know, Ford is a family company and uh, my grandfather, it was a typical story of literally millions of people. He was, you know, he had nothing until he had his job at Ford and I went to college because of his job at Ford. We came here because this is one of the most challenging economic areas in our country. It also has the cleanest energy, the TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority. They have uh, some of the cleanest electrons and very large availability and very affordable availability of clean energy. The reason why that's important, people don't realize that a battery assembly plant uses five times the electricity as an assembly plant. We have three here. So, you know, if you want to make money and be sustainable in this business, you have to get not only clean energy, because that's the right thing to do, but you need to get a lot of it and it's gotta be affordable. Um, the other one is that logistically, this is kind of the right part of America and our truck plants are completely busy now. You know, we've structured our hybrid and ICE lineup for segments that probably won't go electric immediately. Uh, and so we, we, they're busy. We're actually expanding production for a lot of them. So we had to basically build a new plant like we're going to in Ohio mm -hmm. as well. Building plants all over the place. Yes, we are. <laughs> and talking about the batteries, and, and the, the correct me if I'm wrong, this is just going to be NCM uh, yep. batteries. The LFP plant is up in Michigan. Uh, up in Michigan, yes. yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah. The LFP, I mean, I'm glad you brought a pro. You know, people, well, we broke out our financials la uh, yesterday, so now everyone knows not only how successful we are, but how much money. It's a very, it's a, the, our pro business is fantastic. We're literally twice as big as our second place competitor. And pro electric is actually going faster than retail, but it never really gets reported because most customers and most media are retail customers. But LFP is an incredibly important technology, battery chemistry for our commercial customers. The battery cycle life for full charge is about twice. Um, commercial customers don't tend to overbuy batteries because they have repeatable routes. And so LFP's range limitations are not as big a deal for commercial customers. Uh, and it has very little thermal risk. It's a really great chemistry for a commercial customer. Absolutely, and for base vehicles too. Yes. You're putting it in the yes. standard range Mach E. We are. Right? Yeah. So we are. It, it definitely, there's moving forward. There isn't just going to be one battery chemistry that totally rules right. them all. Yes. You know, and yes. uh, and and more to come. Yes. Um, you know, how about 
let's talk about the supply chain issues that we experienced in 2022. Have, have you been able to move beyond that mostly, or is it still uh, uh, creating havoc with, with production? I remember seeing pictures of Fords parked in the parking yeah. lot because you couldn't finish them. No, we're not through it. Um, and, and I think everyone who knew about supply chain said we would be through it, but we're not through it. <laughs> uh, I think the, the, the more strategic parts of the supply chain, you know, when industries change like this, look at the smartphone industry in 08 and 09, supply chain winds up being as important as the excellence in your product, like the iPhone. And, you know, we really see supply chain and the best product as the kind of two winning things we have to get right. The two most strategic supply chain issues that we are now a lot smarter than two years ago is semiconductors and batteries. Um, batteries because, you know, we've been building vehicles for 120 years, but with traditional ICE engines, mm -hmm. scaling battery at high uh, quality that we need is very different than, uh, than what we've been doing for 120 years. You saw what we did with Lightning. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy that the team made the right call and applaud them to stop production. Um, because batteries uh, can be made right or wrong, and when they're made wrong, you know, it's not good. Um, so I, I, I think the scaling of batteries is going to be a thing, um, and we're going to see lots of companies struggle. Like, we're going to 2 million vehicles. And that's about 120, 130,000 a month. You know, we make maybe 10,000 a month now, yeah. so our scale in the next three years is going to have to go up tenfold in battery production. The same with semiconductors. A lot of people focus on advanced node semiconductors, two nanometers, you know, small. But in a vehicle like this or the new EVs or Tesla, whatever, you know, 50, 60% of the chips are, you know, for window regulators, things like that are industrial semiconductors. And they're, there's no new capacity going in for them. And they're all made overseas. So we have to bring industrial semiconductors to the U.S. and we have to build batteries and now we have to build the raw material processing capability local. Absolutely. And that's, that leads me up to my next question. And, you know, I've been covering the EV industry for a while, m more than 10 years when wow. there were very few electric vehicles available. Wow. Uh, and I, I remember talking to executives from various co companies about battery supply yes. and it seemed like most people had this opinion that oh well it's it's just another commodity that will oh, will no. will we, we, yeah. you know it will just get it and um and i watched tesla say we need to be in control of our batteries mm -hmm. we need to control the supply of batteries mm -hmm. and now it seems like some of the companies that i spoke with nine ten years ago are saying oh no 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 we need to be in control of our batteries <laughs> and and you know i'm not saying ford was one of yeah. those companies there's actually some of the german brands that that, yep. that i'm referring to but you know how critical is it i mean you're building 43 gigawatt hour of battery yeah. production here then two more plants in kentucky each yeah. having 43 gigawatt and we got the, michigan yeah. we got yeah. turkey or globally we have you know so much going on like you said i think it's it's mission critical i mean bottom line is to get to 2 million, which we think is largely incremental, we make about 5 million vehicles a year. Mm -hmm. So 2 million is like a 30% growth for the company in revenue. And most of them are turning out to be new customers like you in the Lightning. Um, so we have to, so the 2 million, my, I've asked my team, by the end of this year, we have to have 100% of the raw materials secured for that 2 million units of assembly capacity. Those battery raw materials have to be completely locked down at the end of this year for three years from now. Mm -hmm. So that leads me to my next question. And we're talking about mineral sourcing. You're talking yes. about, about sourcing. You know, in order for your customers to be able to get the federal tax credit, the, the minerals have to be sourced locally. Is Ford going to be able to, to meet that and be able to pass that? Well, tax certainly credit? the batteries will be made locally. Mm -hmm. So the 3750 mm -hmm. is, you know, we feel really comfortable with that. Yeah. I think the, the raw material sourcing will take uh, many years. Mm -hmm. Some will, some won't. We can move a lot of it to free trade uh, countries. The issue that people probably don't realize is the processing of the mine materials. Mm -hmm. That is the most difficult to move out of China. Mm -hmm. uh, almost all, I think 80% of all lithium and nickel processing is yeah. done in China. And so we have to move that 
to places like, mm -hmm. you know, like in Indonesia or South America, mm -hmm. you know, FTA, for, you know, um, countries that, mm -hmm. that are IRA compliant. That's going to take a lot of time. And I think a company like Ford is so committed to this transition, we're going to have to do this in the U.S., that processing. Yeah. We have to learn. And maybe it's small scale at the beginning. <laughs> I think Tesla's doing it at Corpus Christi. That's a good move. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to do that too. We're just getting into large scale battery manufacturing, but the raw material processing is going to be the gating issue yeah okay two quick questions i know you have to go yep solid state batteries are they on your radar uh. and how far out and when are we going to get an affordable ev and i mean twenty five thousand yeah. dollars or less so on um uh yeah good question you know semi hydrogen and, and solid state has been kind of the future for the last 30 years <laughs> um I think what's emerging, what our team really is excited about is semi-solid state. With an electrolyte, a gelatin electrolyte, it's very efficient. You get a lot of that, but it's still ex super expensive. So like with any new technology, we, we definitely see some surprises, like semi-solid state looking really interesting, but it all come down to commercializing and building in the plants that we build, um, you know, lithium ion uh, batteries today, NCM cells. Yeah. Uh, we got to make sure that uh, with semi-solid state or solid state that we can reuse the manufacturing scale that we have with NCM cells. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that that's probably the most promising. And, and yeah, you can see it like coming in the next couple of years. Okay. Listen, Jim, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. This was really great. Good luck with Blue Oval City. You got to have me back when it's all finished. I want, <laughs> I want a tour. I want you to drive the truck the because, uh, because the truck we're going to build here, people I don't think realize that we're already designing our second uh, EV platform. We're finished actually. And Doug Fields came from Apple and Tesla and Alan Clark. I mean, they brought a lot of new thinking to the yeah. company. It's all incorporated into the, this truck. For example, we're going to build the electric architecture and all the software controls of the truck at Ford. We're not going to delegate that to our suppliers. Mm -hmm. I think we'll be at one of the first mainstream brands that could do that to compete against Tesla and have a fully software updatable vehicle. This truck will be that kind of vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really cool. And um, well, I'm you know, looking forward yeah. to it. And, I, uh, I maybe, think, I, maybe I could be a beta tester. Yeah, yeah, good idea. <laughs> I love my life. No. I, I'm sure I'm going to love your next gen truck. Listen, they're waving to us now. Yeah. They, they're, they're trying to flag you. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Really I, appreciate I it. I love, I uh, actually get most of my EV stuff from you guys. So. Oh, wow. I love it. <laughs> Great to hear. I, uh, every day, pretty much, uh, you know, videos, you. your PR releases, you know, they're excellent. Thank and, you. And uh, whether they're good or bad for our company, I always pay attention. Well, we got to shoot down the middle. So <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's the way it works. Take Thank care. you. Thank Take you. Care. Now, I believe Ford understands the industry is at an inflection point. We're going to see tremendous acceleration in electric vehicle adoption in the coming years. And by 2033, only a small percentage of Ford's overall sales is going to come from combustion vehicles. Now, Blue Oval City is the largest investment Ford has ever made on a manufacturing facility. And it's exclusively for the production of electric vehicles and electric vehicle batteries. Now Ford has promised they're gonna invite me back to the site as construction continues. Now hopefully we could maybe coordinate with getting some better weather next time, but uh, we'll do our best on that so I can report back on the progress here of Blue Oval City. Now if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.